one in five of us are highly sensitive, but 70% of HSPs, according to Dr. Elaine Iron's research, are more introverted, 30% are more extroverted. So, you know, the things that we spoke about earlier, um, you know, about the noise things, that doesn't seem to affect the extroverted types as much as the introverted types. And I think just for me, I want to um, break or uh, change the misconception, especially in the Western world, that sensitivity or high sensitivity is a weakness, you know, especially in corporate worlds. And actually, I think this is where the change is coming in now. Um, and this is the change that we're needing in the world because actually it is a real strength. There are lots of gifts, you know, in, in ancient times, a lot of HSPs were sort of known under the names of sort of oracles and shamans and priestesses and all of that. And that's not to mean that we're better than anybody else, it isn't. But we were known as the royal advisors in some ways because we were able to see the sort of bigger pictures and give those subtleties, the impressions, the feelings, the things that we picked up on to help and, and yeah, make a difference. Well, I put it into three sections. So the first section um, is really about the trait. If we're just looking at it from a purely practical, not the spiritual aspect of the trait, just from a purely practical, what it is, um, how it affects us, um, what the indicators are. So there's a tick list on there. Um, I've given some examples about, you know, how we can get overstimulated. I wrote a chapter about what it was like sometimes for me being in a prison because sometimes that will help people think, oh, well, actually, yeah, that happens to me in work. Um, I also talk a little bit about um, the top 10 challenges that I think of being highly sensitive are. Um, and so that's chapter four in there. I talk a bit about our childhood and often if there's been wounding in early childhood for highly sensitive children and um, the sort of roles that we go into as children, you know, the good boy or girl or the little angel. And a lot of HSPs are the helpers or the caretakers of the world. But, you know, as we grow up, they can, a lot of HSPs can go into that um, pattern of being people pleasers, caretakers, um, because they're natural givers. So it's just about Ident again, it's a sort of all about awareness about the patterns that we sort of develop because of things that happen to us if the trait isn't recognised when we're younger. Then the second section of the book is the self-help section. So I talk about, you know, the emotional de debris that we collect over the years. Um, I talk a lot about self-love and self-care because, again, a lot of HSPs are natural givers and so they do tend to put other people first and can end up with burnout. I talk about over-arousal, that over-stimulation that I spoke about earlier. There's a whole chapter on that and techniques and tools to help with that, including the ACE strategy, uh, that's avoid, control or escape. There's also um, some aspects there to do with batch flower remedies that are helpful and certain crystals. There's a chapter about energy protection and clearing ourselves off. So there's quite a big section about the self-help in section two. And then the final section is more the spiritual aspect, what I found with the trait. And that's what I found that my clients were really searching for, a deeper understanding in some way. So. I speak a lot about that we're not just human beings having a spiritual experience, we're actually spiritual beings having a human experience. And I talk about the what I learned really from that time when I was doing my past life training and I also did some training in spirit um, rescue work when I was with Dr. Roger Wolger. And so we talk about past lives, we talk about is there a divine blueprint before we come down, you know, I talk about the help that's around us, whether that's angels, spirit guides, um, whether that's just having a faith. And, and then talking about the balancing for HSPs of the inner masculine and inner feminine stream, the yin or the yang, you know, and what can tend to happen is we can be polarised in one or the other. So for me, what happened when I was younger is I, oft, I sort of went into my more masculine self, the action, the doer, the superwoman and and so when I came into the prison service that was very apparent and sort of over that 10 years 
or when that all everything started opening back up again, you know, I really allowed that feminine aspect of me to come in and get that balance right, which then just, I guess, really enhanced the work that I was that I was doing in there. So we talk about getting that inner masculine and inner feminine right, and then just the last chapter is about how to flourish really and and live your life purpose because a lot of HSPs feel that they're here to make a difference in the world and they often feel unfulfilled if they're not doing what they're doing. So I really just talk about everything that they're doing along the way is actually leading towards what they're supposed to be doing in the world and actually their real purpose in life is just to be. <laughs> be their authentic self, you know, just let the light come through them do the things that they're most passionate about because that will make the difference.